Oh, thank you. I get to follow T.D. Jakes. Awesome. I gotta get my notes, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so the, uh, the word I have this week is wait. Um, so the, uh, you know, waiting is a, is a, it's a terrible uh, subject. Nobody likes to wait, everybody hates waiting. Patience is a hard thing to learn. Uh, there's a major emphasis on waiting in the Old Testament. Um, I'm just going to start with a couple of these scriptures. Isaiah 40, 31 says, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 29, 23. Kings shall be your foster fathers and your queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and look up the dust from your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. So again, in the Old Testament, there's a major emphasis on, on waiting. Um, Abraham had to wait for his promise. Uh, Moses had to wait. Noah had to wait. Um, and they all had to wait faithfully. David, 21 times in the book of Psalms, David mentions waiting. Uh, he waited for 15 years after being anointed king to actually take the throne of Israel. He, he had opportunities. Uh, the King Saul was actively pursuing him and trying to kill him for years after he was anointed to be king. And David refused to take matters into his own hands. And in, in, a, in a handful of cases where he could have killed Saul and taken what was rightfully his, but he refused to take matters into, into his own hands. He waited on the Lord to um, bring forth the promise that he had been given. So the first word... Uh, in wait, the W is watch. And I put on my sheet, I put watch and be ready. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 42 and verse 44 say, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. 44 says, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Um, so if you're praying, for something, and God, God has given you a promise, God's laid something on your heart uh, that you're waiting for, and you're not watching, if you're not paying attention, then you're missing something, and you could potentially be missing exactly what it is that He has for you, or a sign of something that He has for you. I gave this illustration a couple weeks ago when I, when I gave my testimony. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was at the center, and I was anxiously praying for what were going to be my next steps because I needed to get back to work and take care of my kids. Um, so I was praying and praying and praying about that. And the moment that God opened that door for me, I immediately recognized it as an answer to my prayer because I was, because my faith uh, at that point, it, it was, it was not strong, but it was there and it was growing. And I was, watching to see what God would do and how God was going to, to answer uh, this particular prayer. So I knew I wasn't ready to go back to my house and be alone. Um, it was too early in my recovery for that, but God opened the door for me, gave me a place to go, a place to live where I could get back to work and I could still be uh, in my community and I could still be, um, I could still be in recovery and be very close to uh, people that I consider my brothers, my recovery community. The, uh, the A in wait stands for ask. Matthew 7, 7 through 11 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, meaning you're not God, you're just men, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give, give, give good gifts to those who ask him? So, so there's an emphasis on asking. Um, you know, if there's, if there's something that you want from the Lord, all you have to do is ask. 
But there are requirements that go along with that. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Who doesn't lack wisdom? I think that is sort of a rhetorical phrase. If any of you lacks wisdom. I lack wisdom. There's no doubt about that. I think anybody in this room would admit that at least sometimes in their life they lack wisdom. So this is basically saying to all people, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. However, with asking comes a responsibility to be careful what you're asking for. I believe that the I believe that the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life will change the things, will necessarily change the things that you ask for and the things that you want. When your will aligns with the will of the Father and you begin asking for things that are according to His will, powerful things will happen. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in your weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself, Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And that last phrase, according to the will of God, that is the biggest key. I believe that when you... When you allow yourself to be broken and you allow yourself to be desperate enough to seek a relationship with God and, and allow Him to change your life, when you submit your will to His and you begin praying and asking for things that are in His will, you'll receive. I believe that. And I have, I have seen that happen in my own life in many, in many profound ways. Some subtle, some profound. And I know some of my brothers in here would... Um, would agree with me. Would would I could call on four people right now that be able to tell you um, a very specific and pro- profound experience that they had in their life where they set their will aside, put the will of God first, and began to pray over their own lives for where they should go and what they should do, and God opened doors for them. The I stands for in time. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. God has a timing that is not ours. Again, nobody likes to wait. Um, Maybe God's given you a promise for your life, and you're wondering, why can't it all just happen right now? Why, Why can't I have what it is that you have for me right now? Um, there's a process in, in following Jesus. There's a process in becoming a disciple, disciple and being a disciple that involves growth. And growth doesn't happen overnight. Growth happens in a very gradual process based on experiences and responses to those experiences. Um, chances are, if God has something for you in your life or God has made a promise to you for your life, and you don't have it right now, he's either preparing you for it, or he's preparing it for you, or both. Just because there's something that God has for you, just because there's something that God wants to do in your life, doesn't mean that you are ready for it right now. The T in wait stands for trust. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I want to go back to uh, James chapter 1 that I just read a moment ago. There's a promise there, but there's, there's a requirement in the next couple verses. It says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. So it's not just a matter of waiting, it's not just a matter of patience, it's a matter of 
waiting patiently and faithfully. If you are, if you're waiting on the Lord and you're doubting that he will come through for you, James is very clear. He says, let not that man, let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. He wants us to wait on him and he wants us to wait and have faith. He wants us to wait and he wants us to trust him. He wants us to know that that he will come through for us. And faith is something that is practiced. It's something that has to grow. It's something that has to be established, established and rooted. And it comes from experience. But I've found that uh, the Bible says in a couple different places I'm putting them together. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's right. For he who comes to him must know that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In another place, I don't know the reference. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So if you are, if you're desperate and you're broken and you're trying to, you're trying to find a relationship with God, the one that can do immeasurably above all you can ask or think, your experience begins with the word. Um, and when you start, when you begin to try to have a relationship with Jesus, salvation is free. You have to do nothing except believe to receive salvation. That is free. But, but having a relationship with God through Jesus, is it takes work. You have to read and you have to pray. And, and when it doesn't feel like it's working, you have to read and you have to pray some more. And you have to have faith that he's going to change you and that he's going to change your circumstances. And that, and that he's going to come through. He's going to come through for you. So don't give up. Keep working, keep praying, keep reading, don't give up. And if my experience, if my, if my experience and many of the other men and women in this room, if their experience has, has any uh, bearing on the situation, he will come through for you. Thanks for listening. Didn't he do a great job, guys? That was his first